science fiction very often leads the way to, to science fact. Like going to the moon, for example. Somebody was writing about that 100 years ago. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. I wonder if John F. Kennedy would have been in a position to say that had it not been for the science fiction writers 60, 80, 100 years before suggesting that as an idea. Uh, if someone hadn't dreamed that, would the scientists have been able to come to him and say, we can actually do that? Mr. Spahn. Yes, Captain. We were there with the communicator, beep, beep, and talking to people in the late 60s. Enterprise. Enterprise. Spock here. Kirk here. Spock here, Captain. There seems to be a... I did have occasion a, a few days ago to be using my own portable cellular phone. Somebody saw me doing it and burst into laughter and said, there's Leonard Nimoy using the thing from Star Trek, the communicator as a telephone. Now this is the original communicator and we're using it today. Don't you have a problem trying to stay ahead of the guys who copy uh, your ideas? I, I, I think a lot of our hand props are now uh, becoming obsolete because the uh, you know electronics engineers are now uh, uh, you know, they're, they're taking a lot of the, the science fiction concepts and making them real. One place where engineers are rapidly transforming hand props into useful tools is the doctor's office. This is the sick bay from the Starship Enterprise under the direction of Dr. Beverly Crusher with enough gadgets from the 24th century to make a doctor from Mayo Clinic green with envy. This is a scanner Dr. Crusher can pass over the body of a patient and diagnose ailments ranging from the common cold to alterian encephalitis. She has a hypo spray that can inject medicine into the body without penetrating the skin. But wait a minute, here in the 20th century, we can inject medicine into the body carried by a jet of air. And this device will soon be available, allowing you to look through walls and see objects on the other side. Inventions like this in the 20th century keep the writers of Star Trek and science fiction very busy to stay ahead of science fact. The powerful, compact medical scanner has been a key tool for the science fiction doctors of Star Trek. From Bones and Crusher to Bashir, played by Sidi Gelfadil. I should think the tricorder will be a real thing in, in the future, a diagnostic device which is really based on scanning. Um, uh, how on earth they're going to do that is for them to work out. Scientists may not have medical tricorders yet, but they are making significant advances in diagnostic scanning. Dr. Richard Jennings of NASA. We have had limited ability using some special probes to read things such as brain waves without touching a person with a, uh, a peripheral sensor. The PET scanner uses positron emission tomography. It can see right through the skull and indicate areas of mental activity. Medical professionals can use it to locate sites of brain seizure, so neurosurgeons can go in, reset that area, and eliminate the problem. Doctors consider the PET scanner a diagnostic breakthrough, but there are drawbacks. It's very cumbersome and expensive and takes some very cold uh, type equipment. But science may be on the verge of another breakthrough. Dr. Crusher's medical tricorder is possible now, according to Dr. Tom McEwen of Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. This technology is the uh, Star Trek tricorder. This is the, the first prototype of a tricorder. Uh, and I, I can't get into a lot of detail because of our patent position, but uh, we have medical applications uh, that have some similarity to the uh, tricorder. The key to McEwen's tricorder is not some mystery material, it's radar. These radar waves go through things, and they go through human tissue. And so there is the potential to detect and uh, eventually image uh, things inside human bodies. And we have some results already that are spectacular. With medical technology rapidly catching up with Star Trek, the producers have taken the next giant step. In the newest series, Voyager, Robert Picardo plays a virtual physician. He's uh, a holographic medical doctor. He's designed to be sort of an emergency supplemental aid to the regular ship doctor if the, if the regular doctor is too busy or is incapacitated in some way. He's sort of a part-time, computer-generated 
uh, doctor that you can just access the program and he appears and he does the job and then you turn him off and he disappears. So he's, he's not programmed to work for long periods of time and isn't at all happy about it when the ship's doctor is killed in the pilot and he is forced to provide all the regular uh, sick bay services for the entire, for the entire, hopefully seven years we're on television. <laughs>